Welcome back. So, so far in our discussion of clusters of rates, we didn't really say much about clusters. We just talked about how to visualize the rates, the crude rates, and specifically how to apply smoothing to take out the effect of variance instability. In the second lecture, dealing with clustering of rates, we'll actually focus on clusters and specifically on how we can adjust the local Moran statistic uh, for this variance instability. The local Moran statistic is a LISA that allows us to find clusters of elevated and also low um, areas of rates. So first I'll review very quickly because we discussed this already, already to some extent when I covered local joint counts, but I'll just put it in the context here of the local Moran statistic. First, I'll present what the base case is, then a little bit technical discussion of how to adjust the statistic for variance instability, and I close with an illustration. So the local Moran is an example of, as we know by now, or should know, of a local indicator of spatial association, or ELISA. And ELISA, as I've mentioned before, has two important characteristics. One is that there is, statistic, is a statistic for each location separately, for which we can assess significance. The other uh, characteristic is that all the leases, the sum of the leases, is, is proportional to a global statistic. So we have this tension between global and local, and the whole idea of a LISA is, in a sense, to decompose a global statistic into the contribution of each location. And specifically, the local Moran statistic is probably the most commonly used uh, LISA that's out there. First of all, we use row standardized weights, and that is just a mathematical simplification to make the expression of the global Moran psi simple. And so the global Moran psi, as you recall, is a double sum of the weights, uh, row standardized weights, as opposed to the case we discussed for the local joint counts, where the weights were binary, were not row standardized. Cross product statistic, the in deviations from the mean or in, in standardized values, if you wish, the value at location i and the value at location j multiplied by the weight. So in essence, this product is only counted for those i and j pairs that are neighbors, for which wij is not zero. And then we divide the whole thing by the sum of the squares of the zi's. So if you recall my discussion of the LISA earlier, any time we have a double sum like this, we know that the second component is the local statistic. So we can conceive of a local Moran statistic as 1 over the sum of the z squares, which I express as m2 in here, times zi. We move the zi out of the summation since zi doesn't change with j, so we can move it out. And then the sum of over j of the spatial lag or the average of the neighbors in practice. Right? This um, value is constant, it doesn't change, uh, so we can express this in a simpler fashion as just some scaling constant, but the essence of the local Moran is really this part, is the product of the value at a location, z sub i, times its associated spatial lag, or the average of the observations at the neighboring locations. That's the local Moran psi. How do we carry out inference? My preferred way is what I call conditional permutation. In other words, we keep the value at a given location fixed. We take it out of the pot, so to speak, and then we sample the neighbors from the remaining values that we have, do this many, many times, and each time we compute the local Moran statistic, which gives us a reference distribution. 
of what the local Moran would be like under spatial randomness. It's the same principle we used, uh, the same simulation principle we used with the simulation envelopes for the K function and the L function and the G function and so on. Right? So this is conditional permutation that gives us a pseudo significance value for each location. And then we can map this. We can map the locations that are significant and we can find out how this significance changes for different p-values doing a sensitivity analysis. This is what we call the local significance map for a local Moran's eye. And then probably the most informative um, visualization is the local cluster map, which shows the locations with a significant value, but categorized and categorized in terms of positive and negative spatial autocorrelation, local spatial autocorrelation. So positive local spatial autocorrelation are clusters, clusters of high values, which we call high high, or clusters of low values, which we call low low, hot spots or cold spots. And then negative spatial autocorrelation, I call spatial outliers. These are low values surrounded by high or high values surrounded by low. So values that are very different from their neighbors. So that in a nutshell is what we do for the LISA approach for the local Moran. We compute a statistic for each location. We figure out its pseudo p value using a conditional permutation approach. We make a significance map, we make a cluster map, and we assess the sensitivity to the choice of the p-values. Now, what happens if we do this for rates? We have a problem because underlying these local spatial autocorrelation statistics are some pretty strong assumptions. This assumption is usually referred to as stationarity. Stationarity is actually a fairly rigid framework where in essence everything has to be the same everywhere but we lack we relax that a bit to stationarity of the moments of the characteristics of the distribution specifically stationarity in the mean and stationarity in the variance stationarity in the mean implies that there is no trend in the data that the mean is the same everywhere now obviously in most data that is not the case but uh, recall what we did to compute the local Moran, we expressed the variable as a deviation from the mean. And the mean of a deviation from the mean is zero, and that is constant throughout the whole data set. So we fixed potential trends in the data by transforming the variable such that its mean is zero. Now, the variance also has to be constant. And usually that's an assumption we don't pay too much attention to, but we know that for rates and proportions, as we just discussed in the previous lecture, uh, the rate is not constant. In fact, the rate varies inversely with the size of the population of the spatial unit. So we have a problem there. And to fix that problem, what we should not do is you apply um, a smoothing algorithm like empirical base smoothing and then applying the standard Moran's eye to those new rates because the smoothing itself, especially if it's some kind of spatial smoothing, builds in spatial autocorrelation by construction. So that's not very useful. Instead, there have been a number of proposals to fix the statistic directly by carrying out some transformation to the values on which to which the Moran's eye is applied. Now, all of these suggestions actually pertain to the global Moran's eye, so not to the local statistics. And what we've done here is uh, extend this notion to the calculation of the local Moran. And specifically, uh, I follow the suggestion by Asunsao and Reis 
in uh, the formulation of a so-called empirical Bayes index. Now, recall this is for the global Moran, but as we've seen, the global Moran is simply a double sum over i and j, so we can equally apply this principle to the local Moran. And it is it uses it is not the same as empirical Bayes smoothing, but it's an empirical Bayes transformation. It uses the same logic in that it takes the initial crude rate and turns it into a new variable, a transformation by subtracting a mean and dividing by a standard deviation. And the mean and the standard deviation are specific to the rate context. So uh, once we have this new variable, the z sub i, which is our initial rate, crude rate estimate, adjusted for a mean and then rescaled by a standard deviation. If you notice carefully, there's no b sub i here. This is a constant mean, but there is an index i here. So the variance is different for each observation, which is how we address the variance instability. So the principle is very simple. Um, once you've worked through the math, of course, uh, we take the crude rates, we transform them, and then we apply the standard local Moran to the transformed rates, to the EBI rates. And in the Geoda context, we call this uh, local Moran, EBI local Moran. So what is this EBI empirical base index adjustment? It's a little bit complex, but um, if you follow carefully, you'll get the gist of it. So first of all, the mean, we've already seen this. When we computed the excess risk in the previous lecture, we computed the reference mean as the average for the full data set, not the average of the individual rates, but the sum of all the events over the sum of all the populations. That is our mean that we subtract from the original crude rate. So that's the easy part. The second part is not that easy. That's the individual variance. And the individual variance consists of two parts. One, which we'll call alpha here, and the other part, which is straightforward. That's the average divided by the population of the uh, observational unit of the county, say, in our case. The alpha term is a little more complex, and it's possible, because it is a subtraction, that the alpha term is negative. So obviously you can't have a negative variance or a negative standard deviation, so typically what we do when that is the case, then we set alpha to zero. So then the variance is simply the mean divided by the population of the unit. So this alpha term consists of a number of different parts. Um, this part is easy. It's our same B mean here divided by the average population. The average population is the total population divided by the number of aerial units in the data set. We have <coughs> this first term here, which is a weighted sum of the square difference between the crude rate and the mean, weighted by the individual populations, and this weighted sum is divided by the total population of the data set. So with all these pieces in hand, we have all the pieces, we have the cases uh, in each aerial unit, we have the crude rates in each aerial unit, we can easily compute the overall mean, we have the total population in the data set, and we have the average population in the data set. So with all these pieces in hand, we compute the variance as alpha plus b over pi, and then we get the standard deviation as the square root of the variance. So uh, principle, pretty straightforward. We start with the crude rates. We compute these adjustments. We turn each crude rate into a new transform variable, which we refer to as z sub i, and then we apply the local Moran to the z sub i. Now, does this make a difference? It depends. 
in some applications it doesn't make any difference at all uh, especially if all the aerial units have pretty much the same population then the variance instability is not a big issue so the adjustment will not make a big difference at all in other instances especially where there's large populations mixed with much smaller populations you can have an issue and as it turns out the state of Illinois is a perfect example to illustrate this because we have some counties in the metro Chicago area that have very large populations and some other counties in the middle and the south of the state that have much smaller populations. We return to our earlier example of the COVID cases as a rate, as a crude rate in June 2020. So this is the input in our analysis and we can do it two ways. On the left, we have a cluster map using the original crude rate and on the right we have a cluster map based on the transformed empirical Bayes index rates. And in this particular example we see that they're by no means the same. For example, um, the high high cluster in the Chicago metro area, once we use the EBI rate, this uh, county is no longer part of the cluster. On the other hand, with the EBI rates, the cluster of low, low values in the middle, middle south of the state is much larger than before, much more extensive in the middle, but the little part at the southern, southeastern end is no longer significant. So in this particular case, we have several instances where the indication of significance for the crude rate is very different from the indication of significance for the EBI, the empirical base index based rate. But as I mentioned uh, in the context, um, this is not always going to happen. In fact, in many applications, the difference between the two is pretty marginal. The critical factor is whether or not the um, populations are very different because the population differences drive the variance instability, which is the cause of the problem, the cause of the difference between the, ca the two cases. So we quickly uh, reviewed the local Moran and what happens to it for rates due to the variance instability. So this provides us with one technique to find clusters in rates. In the next lecture, we'll use a different technique based on the idea of a scan statistic. See you then.